From massive supercarriers the size of entire cities, to orbital platforms which propel slugs to a fraction of the speed of light, the Halo series provides us with a ton of interesting imagery and ideas when it comes to space battles, but we don't actually see them played out in the games very often. In this video, I'll take you through the basics of Halo space combat in preparation for Halo Infinite. If you've never read a single Halo book or manual before, that doesn't matter because in this video, I will attempt to cover it all. The Halo series so far has been set in the modern era of the universe, with the first three games taking place during the Human Covenant War, the tail end of that 27 year conflict, and the later set in the post-war period, but it's a galaxy where the past has also been filled with war, and where that history still heavily affects the modern times. 100,000 years before Halo combat evolved, the galaxy was populated by several advanced races, one of them being the Forerunners. The Forerunners would enter a devastating war against a parasitic, all-consuming life form known as the Flood, and would be forced to activate their greatest superweapon, the Halo Rings. The Halo Rings would wipe out most life within the galaxy, including the Forerunners, and the galaxy would be reset essentially to a blank slate. The Forerunners would reseed the species of the galaxy, including humanity, and the last evidence of the Forerunners would be their great megastructures and technology, which could be found throughout the galaxy. Of course, I could do a whole video on the battle tactics, technology, weaponry, ships, etc. of the Forerunners, but I'll do so maybe on a different day. Fast forward to modern Halo and the Human Covenant War, and we have two dominant factions in the galaxy, Humanity, the UNSC, and the Covenant, an empire made up of several alien races. There were major differences in human and covenant technology. The Covenant discovered many pieces of Forerunner technology, so their level of technological advancement was far beyond that of humanities. Humans, on the other hand, who had not been gifted Forerunner technology, were more creative and adaptable, but were light years behind the Covenant when it came to naval warfare tech. That being said, given that they existed in the universe, both the UNSC and the Covenant relied on one technology which formed the basis of interstellar warfare, slip space. When a ship or a message or a piece of information enters slip space, it's actually entering a portal between dimensions, which allows faster than light travel. Now, Covenant slip space drives, due to the fact that they were built off Forerunner technology, were significantly faster than human drives, giving them a serious tactical advantage. But that was far from the only advantage the Covenant had, Let's take a look at the ships of humanity, the UNSC, and the Covenant Empire. First of all, Covenant ships were protected by a sturdy energy shield. This shield could absorb energy weapons as well as projectiles and needed to be lowered for the Covenant to fire on an enemy. Although this process was usually done extremely quickly, such that it could be difficult for the UNSC to use this lowered shield to their advantage. Covenant ships used a variety of energy weapons, which were usually very, very effective against UNSC armor. Often, Covenant ships would destroy human vessels in a single shot, but were also capable of surviving UNSC fire. Unsurprisingly, space battles were typically heavily slanted towards the Covenant, with the UNSC sometimes needing a 3 or 4 to 1 advantage to take down a single Covenant ship of similar tonnage. The most powerful Covenant weapons were large energy projectors or excavation beams, which could be used not only to cut apart enemy ships, but also to glass the surface of planets. Many of the larger Covenant vessels, and I'll talk about that in a minute, would possess one beam for the purpose of excavating with other secondary beams for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Smaller scale Covenant weaponry included pulse lasers for anti-fighter and anti-projectile duties, as well as magnetically guided and contained plasma, which were called plasma torpedoes. Humanity had very different technology. Ships during the war were not shielded. There was not a single completed UNSC ship which used any sort of energy shield. That would change after the war when humanity began reverse engineering Forerunner and Covenant technology and produced ships like the UNSC Infinity. Most UNSC ships instead were protected by very thick armor. 
Weapon wise, many UNSC ships had one major feature and that was the magnetic accelerator cannon, frequently called the MAC. MACs accelerated a heavy projectile to extreme speeds, smashing it through enemy vessels. This is a fairly similar idea to a rail gun or coil gun. The destructive capability comes not from explosives, but rather the mass and velocity, i.e. the kinetic energy of the object. Many UNSC ships were arguably built around the MAC. It was the main offensive feature of the vessel, and MACs varied in size, from smaller versions built into UNSC frigates and destroyers to massive Super Macs built into defensive platforms. Most ships had a standard single firing Mac. After firing the weapon, the Mac would need to be reloaded, although sometimes they could be fired at a partial charge. However, other ships like the Pillar of Autumn had a multi-firing system and other large vessels had double Macs or other exotic configurations. Being that the Mac was the main weapon of UNSC ships and UNSC fleets, tactics were often built around the firing of these weapons, as we'll discuss later. UNSC ships usually had secondary weapon systems, including archer missiles, point defense guns, and even nuclear ordnance. When it comes to ship tonnage and classes, the Covenant almost always vastly outweighed and outgunned the UNSC. UNSC ships fell on several classes based on ship size and weaponry, with frigates being among the smallest ship class ordinarily in service, cruisers being the most common large ship, with there being very few higher tonnage ships, including the Epoch class heavy carrier, the Punic supercarrier, and the Infinity supercarrier. At the UNSC's height, there were probably no more than one or two dozen of these very large ships. By the end of the Human Covenant War, they were almost all destroyed, and they typically served as the flagships of very important fleets. In a prior video, I calculated that at the height of the Navy, the UNSC may have had about 2,000 ships, with a lot of those, of course, being small ships or even support vessels. The Covenant, on the other hand, possessed a lot more ships and a lot more powerful vessels. The Covenant Navy was, of course, also split up into classes. Like humanity, the smallest ships were corvettes and frigates, with the largest ships being the cruisers and carriers, and very rarely larger ships like supercarriers. Carriers, because of their size, shielding, and weaponry, were often capable of engaging entire UNSC fleets. The CAS class assault carrier was over five kilometers long and could not only dominate in space, but also support entire ground invasions. One of the most common Covenant ships was the CCS class battle cruiser, which held a clear advantage in pretty much every category against UNSC ships of similar class like the Marathon cruiser. Within a ship type, there were sometimes different designs. These were known as patterns within the Covenant fleet. The CAS class, for example, had the Corel pattern and the Siphon pattern, among others. When it comes to tactics in Halo, starfighters play a less important role compared to some other universes like Star Wars. Usually because of the power of the weapons that each ship is using, the battle is over before starfighters can even get within range. Still, UNSC fighters would sometimes carry nuclear payloads or traditional missiles, whereas Covenant vessels would have small plasma weapons. The Covenant had such an advantage in space that typically their tactics weren't very complicated and relied on sheer aggression, with retreat for military purposes almost never being a viable option. Humanity, on the other hand, was much more pragmatic and built their tactics around their most powerful weapon, the Mac. And a lot of this came down to whether a UNSC Mac could be expected to one-shot a Covenant vessel. Something like an orbital defense platform could destroy almost every single ship with a single shot, whereas cruisers would not be able to destroy large Covenant ships in a single volley. Thus, in the case of fleet action, UNSC ships would frequently try to coordinate so that either one ship could take down a Covenant shield and the other ship could attack its hull directly with a Mac cannon or if the shield was too powerful, such that both ships could attack the shield at the same time, removing it, then following up with archer missile pods and other weapons. Firing the Max, then following up with missiles or other weapons was something a single ship would typically do as well. The problem was if a Covenant vessel could survive long enough to absorb the first Mac blast, 
it was unlikely that the human ship would have time to get off a real shot. When you read Halo books, the battles are often sort of described in these waves, just like this. During larger battles like the attack on Reach, the UNSC will fire, they'll sustain massive losses to the Covenant counterattack, then the remaining ships will fire again, resulting in battles that were frequently very, very short. When desperate, the UNSC would even use repair cradles and other manned ships to provide cover for their invaluable men. Both UNSC and Covenant ships made use of AI and electronic warfare, although human AI were much more advanced than their Covenant counterparts, and sometimes pulled off miraculous victories as we see with Cortana at the beginning of Halo CE. AI could do everything from calculating math during the battle to aiming the ship, to playing music over the bridge and whatever else was needed. And that's the basics of warfare in the Halo universe, at least during the Human Covenant War, where again the Covenant had a lot more ships and each ship was far better. The tide changes a little bit in the post-war period, with the Covenant crumbling, with splinter factions forming, and with the UNSC also beginning to reverse engineer technology and create their next generation of warships. Where this will leave the galaxy in the Halo Infinite period, who knows, but I'll be excited to see alongside you guys. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.